Moving on now, we got Edmonton against Nashville. I think Nashville's a good team. They have a lot of momentum after that win over Vancouver. However, I think Edmonton, they're just playing well. I've liked them a lot this year. Give me Edmonton. So we got Edmonton and Winnipeg in the West. Boston against Tampa Bay. Both these teams are strong. However, when Boston's strong, Boston's strong. Give me Boston over Tampa Bay to win this series. Next, we got Carolina and Washington. Washington's a good team. They're on a run. They're definitely a sleeper team. I could see going far. However, I think Carolina is a much better team, and they're way more built, I think, right now than Washington. Give me Carolina. Conference final season is underway, and conference final season is here. We've got Edmonton and Winnipeg. This will be a close series. I could see this one going the distance to seven games. However, I think Edmonton's a much better team, and they are ready to compete for the Cup. Edmonton Oilers, Connor McDavid, you are finally Stanley Cup bound. Now on to the Eastern Conference, Boston and Carolina. I think Boston's a strong team, and that Boston will just plow them through. Give me Boston here in the up in the series win. So our Stanley Cup final match is set. The Boston Bruins. The Edmonton Oilers, I feel that both these teams are good. Both these teams are strong. They're both capable of doing it. However, I think in the end, the Boston Bruins will win this series and win the Stanley Cup. So that's all for NHL. I will tell you real briefly my NBA championship prediction. This year, I like the, da I like the Milwaukee Bucks over the Dallas Mavericks in the NBA Finals. That's all I have for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good one. Take care. Stay safe. And as always, peace. See you guys next season. Also, I just did want to say at the end, thank you guys so much for all the support this year. Watching this series, it greatly means a lot to me. I highly recommend you watch my Battle in Bucks. So it's the Pirates edition of this. So, so I highly recommend you start tuning into that and tune into all my other videos. So, yeah, don't be done with quite yet. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you for the support this year, and we cannot wait to see you in the fall for more Pittsburgh Penguins hockey updates. And if there's anything, like, significant over the summer, we'll probably do a video on it. So, if not, see you in the fall. Have a good one. Peace. See you next time. Good Sunday night, everybody. It's Sunday, April 21st. Welcome to this week's edition of the Battle in Bucks. So, with Mason Sapesky. The Pirates right now are officially the coldest team in baseball following a 9 and 3 start. The Pirates are now an even 500, 11 and 11. This comes as they were swept this week in Plussing at the hands of the New York Mets, then swept at home to the Boston Red Sox. This reminds me of last year of the stretch where they went on 6 against the likes of the Rays and the Tampa and the Toronto Blue Jays. However, that was coming off of a 29 start. The Pirates this year will not reach that benchmark. But the Pirates are right now the coldest team in baseball, 0-6. But this, like I was saying, this reminds me of the Struts when we lost those, but we were 20-9. and We'll fail to get there this year, and I don't know if we're going to match 76 wins. I don't. I'm just very disappointed right now in the team. There was a lot of promise coming into this year, and... The worst part is, and we're going to talk about this Tuesday, is the way they're handling pitchers. So, anyway, let's talk. Let's take a look at the week first. Monday, and just to outline you guys, if this is your first time watching this, here's how this episode will work. I will first off go through each individual game and what I thought about the team this game. Then I will, once we're done with that, reviewing the week, we'll look at the MLB standings, the current MLB playoff picture. And then after that, we will preview the upcoming week. So without further ado, here we go. On Jackie Robinson Day, Monday, April 15th, the Pirates lost 6-3 to three to the Mets. This was not a bad loss. It was probably their best game of this week, to be honest with you. And they looked average. I mean, three runs, it's not going to win you games. But sometimes, a lot of times, it may not lose you them either. So can't really say that one was bad. We just let it get out of hand, which... You know, it was very unfortunate, and yeah. 
That's all I'm going to have to say about that one. But that, that one didn't worry me that much. The next day, though, April 16th, we were in a tight game, 1-1 against the Mets. However, we let them win the game 3-1. I was a little upset about this one because they pulled Jared Jones after 60 pitches. I understand development is key for these pitchers. However, the way they handled them in schemes at times is not very good. Other teams would probably not be doing this. I understand you need to keep them healthy. But Skeens was complaining about his workload, like saying it's not enough in AAA. And the fact they still are going to wait for a while to call him up, I think this is mismanagement on their part. I think the Selton is part of it. Not Charrington is not guilt-free here, but he's certainly... Not a big problem here because I like the way he's restocked the farm system and has gotten some quality players. So, yeah, and I definitely think he's better than Huntington and he's probably the best we could do right now. So, yeah, can't blame him. You cannot blame him. He's the one who drafted Jared Jones. So, yeah, can't blame him. But a free one loss and the way they managed that was unacceptable to me. 17th, they lost 9-1 to to the Mets. <sighs> losses like this get you in baseball. They really do. Like, they these kind of losses, they, like, really get you in baseball. And it's unfortunate. So, 9-1 to win, or 9-1 to loss. Yeah. I know the Mets are, the hot, like, the hottest team right now, but you can't be swept. You can't be swept. This team literally had not lost a series all year, and then they get swept in the hands of the New York Mets. It's unfortunate. It is. Gotta be better. First, it was an off day. Time for the team to recoup. Hopefully, they used it to their advantage. However, I don't feel like they did because guess what? They were swept by the Red Sox, starting with an 8-1 to loss on Friday night. The pitching was atrocious. The offense was even worse. Whatever happened to the team that came back from down nine runs last year in Cincinnati? Down three to the Marlins, down five to the Marlins, down big to other teams. What happened to those Pirates? Why is there no fight? Why is there no grit? Sometimes they're just going for the motions, I think, at this point. It's unacceptable. It's weak. It's ridiculous. Yesterday, the team lost for two to the Boston Red Sox. Again, they're in a slump right now. They can't do anything, and... We, the fans, have the right to be angry. And same on you, Rowdy Telez. Same on you. We, the fans, have the right to be angry. But, yeah, players should critique. I get it. You're trying. However, try harder. Because what's going on now is unacceptable. And then April 21st, today, we lost to the Red Sox 6-1. to I, I just, I can't believe it. For the second consecutive year, we've gone a week without a win. And it's only going to get worse. This Pirates team might lose 100 games. Very well. However, they might still make the playoffs. It's early. It is very early. But this week was unacceptable. They need to get out of this hole. So, yeah. Let's take a look now at the MLB standings as of right now. The New York Yankees are 15 and starting with the AL East. The New York Yankees are 15 and 7, leading that division. The Baltimore Orioles are in second place at 14 and 7. Third place, the Boston Red Sox at 13 and 10. Fourth place, the Toronto Blue Jays at 12 and 10. And in last place, the Bay Rays at 12 and 11. AL Central, the Guardians are leading that division, and they're also leading the league. They currently have a 16 and 6 record. In second place, we have the Royals at a 13 and 9 record. Third place, we have the Detroit Tigers here at 12 and 10. Fourth place, we have the Minnesota Twins here at 7 and 13. And in fifth place, we have the atrocious Chicago White Sox, who are 3 and 18 right now. That is just as bad as the 2022 Reds. It feels like they're not going anywhere anytime soon. It's going to be another couple. They might be okay next year or 2026, but. That's the soonest I could see things getting situated in Chicago. But, I mean, look. Just look at Cincinnati. They were 3-21 in 2022. 62-100 that year. 
2023, they were amazing. 83 and 79. Wow. And I think they're primed for a big year. Quick rebuilds can be done in the MLB. They proved it. Baltimore proved it. So maybe Chicago will be next. Time will tell. ALS now. The Texas Rangers, they're currently playing the Atlanta Braves. But right now they stand at 11-11, and leading that division. Seattle Mariners are 10-11, and second place. They're currently playing the Rockies. LA Angels, 9-14. and Oakland Athletics, 8-14. and And the last place, Houston Astros, at 7-16. and They are finally not very good. Thank goodness. How about the fact the A's are better than them? That's hilarious. And the A's, they're not very good. They're 8-14, and, and they're probably going to have 100 last season, if not darn close to it. But hey, at least they're better than the, the Astros. Just say that. Now to the National League. Especially at the National League East, there's a lot of good teams right now. The Atlanta Braves are 14-5, and five, leading that division. The Phillies are 14-8, and eight, a game and a half back. Mets are three games back, 12-9. and nine. Nationals, 10-11, and 11, five games back. And the Marlins, 6-17. and 17. They're not very good. They're 10 games back. NL Central. You got the Brewers leading our division at 14-6. and six. They're just the, they're the new, like, super team. They're always good. Like, they can never be bad, it seems like. So, yeah. Second place, two games back are the 14-9 and nine Cubs. Third place, two and a half games back are the Cincinnati Reds. And 12-9. 11 and 11 in fourth place are your Pittsburgh Pirates, four games back. And last place, 9 and 13, St. Louis, six games back. NL West, 13 and 11 LA Dodgers. Not as good as people said they would be, are they? 13 and 11. Second place, one game back, the 12 and 12 Padres. Third place, 11 and 12, one and a half games back are the Arizona Diamondbacks. Fourth place, 10 and 13, two and a half back are the Giants. And in fifth place, the 5-16 and 16 Rockies, seven games back. Sorry, I forgot to do that for the AL. Your wild, your wild card teams right now, or let's look at the wild card right now. Leading, though, the teams that would get buys in the AL are the 16-6 and 6 Guardians and the 15-7 and 7 Yankees. In third place are the Texas Rangers. They would host the Boston Red Sox in a wild card round if things ended today. The 5th place Royals and the 4th place Orioles would play each other there. A half game back are the Detroit Tigers. A half game back are the Blue Jays. One game back are the Rays. Two games back are the Mariners. Three and a half back are the Angels. Four and a half back are the Athletics. Four and a half back are the Twins. Six back are the Strohs, Astros. And nine back are the White Sox. Yeah, things are over in Chicago, I, I think. I'm sorry, guys, but things are over. NL, your two teams right now with buys would be the first seeded Braves and the second seeded Brewers. The third seeded Dodgers would host the six seeded Reds. The fifth seeded Cubs would host the would travel to Philadelphia to take on the four seeded Phillies. A game and a half back of the Mets, oh the Mets and the Reds are tied for that final wild card. So I don't know if that would be a plane or how that would work, but winner of that would whichever team gets in there would take on the Dodgers. A game and a half back of them are the Padres at 12 and 12. Another a game and a half back are the Pirates. Two games back are the Diamondbacks. Two games back are the Nationals. Three games back are the Giants. Four three and a half back are the Cardinals. Seven back are the Marlins and Rockies. <coughs> All right, now on to the week ahead for the Pirates. Four games against the Brewers. The homestand continues with those four games. Monday night, 6.40, Tuesday night, 6.40, Wednesday night, 6.40, and then a 12.45 p.m. game against the Brewers at PNC. This weekend, though, the team heads out west to the Bay Area. They will take on the Giants Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday's first pitch is 10.15, so we can watch that once the NFL draft concludes on Friday night. Keep an eye out for those videos as well, because there will be a lot of them Sunday through Wednesday, so keep an eye out for those. Saturday night, 9.05 in San Francisco, and Sunday at 4.05 against the Giants. So definitely an exciting week of sports ahead. Definitely going to be an interesting week for me. This is my finals week, so yeah, I'm excited. Big week, so yeah, great times. Anyway, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. Take care, stay safe, and as always, peace. See you guys in the next episode.